Hey tea heads, this is Don from Mayleaf. In this video, how to brew green tea. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to get the best out of your green tea. This video is gonna go under the basic tea educations playlist. If at any point in time you enjoy this video, then please give the video the thumbs up. The more thumbs in the air, the more tea videos are gonna come your way. And if you haven't subscribed to our YouTube channel yet, then go click that button. Okay, this video comes as a direct response to a user um, called Share the Key on YouTube, who wrote to us and asked us to make a video about how to brew green tea, specifically how to get the right temperature water for green tea. So this is an answer to you. Okay, so first and foremost, this video is gonna go through a guideline to brewing green tea. Everybody's different, everyone likes their tea brewed differently, that's perfectly fine but this is a good starting point for you. So there are no hard and fast rules. This is a good starting point for anybody who wants to brew green tea. We've made a downloadable guide. I'll put the link in the description below so you can download the guide and you can um, look at all tea types. Um, but this is for green tea. So the most important thing with any tea is get good leaf. There's no point in you having a bad starting point. This is Huangshan Maofeng. This is a very good, high quality green tea from Huangshan. There's an expression which goes, you can never make good tea from bad leaf, but you can always make bad tea from good leaf. And that shows you, if you're starting with bad leaf, forget it, you're not gonna produce really high quality tea. And even if you've got very good leaf, you have to be careful in the way that you brew to make sure that you get the best out of it. Okay, so, the brewing process. Let's quickly just step back and look at the brewing process. The brewing process is an extraction process, okay? In this leaf, there are hundreds of compounds and all of them extract at different rates and differently. So the art of brewing, the reason why people spend a lot of time learning brewing and, and, and experimenting with brewing is the art of being able to extract exactly the right balance of these compounds to get the right flavored tea for you. Um, now, green tea is well known for having, having very high levels of a compound called catechins. Catechins are antioxidants, very high strength antioxidants that exist in high levels in green tea. Catechins are very good for you, but they're also very bitter. So we want to make sure when we're extracting green tea, in other words, when we're brewing, to make sure that we extract the right level of catechins so that we don't have excessive bitterness. So commonly people say to me, I don't like green tea, it's too bitter. And usually the reason for that is because, well, either they've got bad tea or, God forbid, they're brewing from tea dust in tea bags, which extracts everything very quickly, or they are extracting too strong, probably using water that's too hot or brewing it for too long. So in the brewing process, you have three brewing decisions to make or three factors which affect the balance that ends up in your cup. The first is the amount of leaf you're gonna to use to water, right? There are generally considered to be two schools of brewing, the Western style, the more economical, uh, the more kind of affordable brewing style, and then the Chinese style. The only difference between them is the amount of leaf to water ratio. So with Chinese style, they're using a lot of leaf to a small amount of water, whereas Western style, they're using a smaller amount of leaf to a larger amount of water. Um, so Western style for green tea, you're looking at something at around two grams per 300 ml of water. For um, Chinese uh, style brewing, you're looking at something like five grams to six grams per uh, 200 ml of water. So quite a difference, right? Now, a lot of people say to me, I don't know how to measure it because I don't wanna pull out uh, weighing scales. After you've brewed for a few, uh, brewed many times, you start to just do things by eye. A good kind of rule of thumb is a large, a really large pinch, something like this. Let will see if I can focus for you. Something like this is about one and a half to two grams. So that would be sufficient for your um, 300 ml of water. Right, so that's the amount of leaf. 
Let's talk brewing times. Western style is around one and a half to two minutes. Chinese style is around 10 seconds, something like that. Um, maybe even five seconds once the leaf has started opening up, right? So very different in terms of brewing time. So we've spoken about leaf to water ratio. We've spoken about steeping time. Now let's talk about what Share the key, the user who wrote to us would like specifically to know about, which is water temperature. I think that a good starting water temperature for green tea is about 80 degrees. If you brew with boiling hot water, uh, what will happen is it'll extract very quickly everything from the leaf, including those catechins, and you have less control of when you pour, you have less control of um, reducing the amount of catechins in the actual uh, tea that you're drinking. Now, if you wanted to brew tea specifically for health, only for health, you didn't care about taste, and you just wanted the healthiest brew you could, then you would brew it hot and you would steep it for a long time and you would have a very strong bitter brew. But we're brewing for flavor here. We want to enjoy our tea, so we'll drink lots and lots of it, right? So we want to be able to control how much catechins are, are in the final tea, so we do that by controlling temperature. So let's brew some tea. First thing that I'm gonna do is I've got some freshly boiled water here. I'm just gonna put some into each pot. Now the reason I do this is because what we want to do is bring the teaware to a high temperature or to a temperature which is closer to our brewing temperature. If we don't do that, then when we pour water into a cold pot, the glass absorbs all the, the temperature, the heat, um, and we end up um, losing a lot of the heat so you don't get a nice brewing, consistent brewing temperature. Right, so let's take this leaf. So as I said, this is about five grams here. This is a 200 mil pot. So you can see, probably once I shake it down, we're talking about a third of the way up the pot, something like that which is always a good rule of thumb, about a third. Let's do the same here. So what we're going to do is we're going to be brewing with 80 degree water here, and then we're gonna be brewing with uh, freshly boiled water, so around uh, 90, 95 degree water. Um, and then we're gonna see what the difference is. I'm actually interested to do this. I've never done this AB myself, so this is quite interesting. Okay, so how do you get 80 degree water? Well, I've just got freshly boiled water next to me. What you can do is you can stop the kettle when the kettle is making a loud rumbling noise and you see a single column of steam rising from the spout. That's around 80 degrees. Um, what you can also do is add a splash of cold water to the kettle. Around 10% of the volume, maybe a bit less, 5 to 10%. Just add a good splash of cold water and you will get the temperature down. So let's try that. So here is freshly boiled water. I'm gonna put about 200 ml of water in here. And I've got some cold water here and I'm just gonna put a little splash of cold water, about 20 ml, something like that. Let's see, I've got a temperature, uh, I've got a thermometer here, which, is not working. Come on. Here we go. Right, so a little splash of water. Let's see what it's brought it up to. Here you go, you can see yourself. So 82 degrees, something like that. 81.5, you can see how it's starting to drop. Right, so that's our temperature, so that's about right. Just check I'm in focus, okay. So I'm gonna pour that one in here. Now, normally I would rinse, but I'm conscious of not making this video too long. Uh, you don't really need to rinse with uh, green tea. It's very suitable for oolongs and puas. You don't have to rinse with green teas. It just means that the first steep is gonna be a bit longer. So this has been about seven seconds. We're gonna keep brewing. We're gonna do about 20 second brew here. I'm gonna intentionally brew a little bit harder just to make sure that we really uh, taste the difference. Okay, so I'm 
conscious of making sure that the brewing time is about the same. So I've got a little stopwatch here. Okay, so that's about 20 seconds and we're gonna pour this out. Subsequent infusions, you don't have to brew as long because obviously the leaf has started opening up. Right, just gonna put the kettle back on and we're going to um, brew this one with boiling water. Now, boiling water is a bit of a misnomer. Straight from the kettle is never gonna be boiling water. It's gonna be about 90, 95 degrees, something like that. So there you go. Put that on, start my stopwatch. So we wanna make sure that we get uh, the same brewing time so we can do a genuine like for like uh, taste test. And hopefully we're gonna notice a difference. Um, so that's about there. You can see brewing in glass is lovely because you can really see the leaf start to react to the water, right? So here we go, tea goes in. Right, now what I'm gonna do what I'm going to do is now pour into these tasting cups, uh, sorry, smelling cups, these aroma cups, because I really want to see if I can notice any difference in the actual aroma. Take this, twist and turn. Take this one, twist and turn. Okay, so let's see if we can uh, notice any difference in the smell. Wow, beautiful, lovely, light, fragrant, slightly flowery. Let's see if I notice a difference on the boiling water. Yep, definite difference. Slightly, got more of a stewed note. And what I mean by stewed is um, slightly older, like um, as if you imagine wood that's soaked up water. It's got that kind of slightly woodier, um, wetter, if that makes any sense, wetter aroma. Okay, so now I'm gonna pull the camera around and we're gonna have a taste and you're gonna see the difference in color of this tea. Okay, so here we are. We've got the two cups of green tea that I've just brewed um, and I hope you can see through the camera the difference in color. So this one here is made with the boiling water this one here is made with the 80 degree water and you can immediately see that this is a lot darker, has a slightly a yellow, slightly yellower tint to it compared to this one, which is very bright and um, more of a kind of uh, slightly kind of light lime green yellow rather than this slightly duller yellow. Um, you can also see here, if I can get them in focus, let me see if I can get these in focus. Hold on one second. Right, so this one here is made with the 80 degree water and this one here is with the boiling water. So you can immediately see the difference that just 20 degree or even less because the boiling water is never boiling, boiling. So 10 to 15 degree difference, you can see how much this one here has been opened up, the leaf has been opened up and extracted much, quick, much more quickly than this one where the leaf is still opening up. So that's a perfect visual example of how the temperature of the water affects the um, rate at which the leaf will open and extract, which means that the lower temperature water one, you have more control than the higher temperature water one. Okay, I'm gonna put the camera back and we're gonna taste. Right, tasting time. So you've already seen the color difference between the 80 degree water and the 95 degree water. You've also seen how the leaf reacts differently according to the temperature of the water. But what's most important is taste. So let's taste. So this is the 80 degree. Soft, lively, um, very fragrant, like, um, like uh, morning dew over a, a, over a meadow, that beautiful kind of, bright freshness. It's also got some vegetal notes. 
So spinach, those very green spinach notes. It also has a slight sweetness, like a kind of new potato with the skin st still on, that, that kind of sweetness. And it's got a lovely balance between bright and a slight astringency, so a nice little bit of grip, um, so you get this nice refreshment. So it's a beautiful balance. Huangshan Maofeng is a very light tea, so this is a great tea to do this test on because it's very easy to throw the balance out. Okay, wonderful. Let's taste uh, the 95 degree and see if it makes any difference. Honestly, a world of difference. I'm actually shocked at the level of difference that this has made. This tastes, well, first of all, it's very dry and it's, and it's got um, a lot more bitterness. So it certainly has extracted more of those catechins. Um, and the taste is just really dull. It's woody, it's, it's, um, it's woody, it's dusty. It, it tastes almost like an old tea, like something that's about, um, two years old when it's actually less than a year old. It's, it's remarkable the difference that just that 10 to 15 degrees makes. Yeah, it tastes dead and dusty and just not very good. Whereas this one, bright, lively, fragrant, juicy, wonderful, a really completely different tea. So you've got the same leaf, you've got the same amount of leaf to water ratio, you've got the same tea wear, You've got the same steeping time. And just that 10 to 15 degrees difference has made two completely different teas. I would highly recommend that you try this at home. Um, and I think you'll agree with me that 80 degrees is the perfect starting point. Listen, if you like your teas to be more tannic, if you like them to be drier and slightly more bitter, then brew hot by all means. This is just a guideline, but I think 80 degrees is the perfect starting point. I hope that answers your question to the viewer who left the comment. If you made it to the end of this video, then please give the video the thumbs up. Check out our playlist, and just like the other viewer who wrote to us, if you have any ideas for videos that you'd like us to make, then please let us know. If you're in London, then come visit us in Camden to say hi and taste our wares. If you have any questions or comments, then please fire them over. We always try and answer them. Other than that, I'm Don May from Mayleaf. Thank you for being a part of the revelation of true tea. Stay away from the tea bags, keep drinking the good stuff, and spread the word because nobody deserves bad tea. Bye.